There's a, you, we have another uh, viewer has called in with a question, and it is somewhat related in terms of a safety question. Uh, and this question is about domestic abuse and gun violence, uh, gun possession, and the caller feels the expansion of the law affects Second Amendment rights. And I believe that's a, a bill that would limit the ownership rights of an individual who has had domestic uh, assault conviction. Is that correct? Am I getting that right? Yep. Uh, and someone is calling, questioning that and whether or not that's constitutional. Well, I don't think the bill actually affects ownership rights. Uh, it just requires someone, and I'm not familiar with all the details of the bill, that uh, is in one of these situations to give up their guns uh, temporarily uh, until issues are settled. Um, it's a bill that actually uh, the NRA did not oppose. Uh, I've been an NRA member for a long time and depend on their advice in these issue areas. I did vote for the bill as it moved off the House floor uh, a few days ago. Um, it seems like a pretty reasonable compromise and uh, doesn't seem to threaten the uh, ownership rights of guns. And, and the one thing it does is that uh, it, it eliminates a couple other felonies that, that were uh, uh, involved with guns so that uh, auto theft and looting, so to speak, right now, uh, at least in the Senate bill, uh, would no longer be reason for you not to have gun rights. So what they've done is take three felonies off and put three felonies on. And the, and the, and, and the felonies that they picked to uh, be more restrictive are the ones that uh, the statistics show uh, have more murder and, and violent uh, crime involved. So. I think something else, <clears throat> too, to remember about this specific bill is that um, it's not just the domestic assault charges, it's the restraining order that goes along with that, that if um, somebody has a restraining order placed against them, um, they, would, they would have due process of law in terms of going before you know, a judge, going into the court system for that restraining order. Um, so you know that, that check and balance, if you will, is still there. Um, and then also, once the uh, restraining order is up, or once, once that's uh, the duration of the restraining order is through, um, this individual would be eligible to actually get their firearm back. And so they could, um, for example, give it to a family member who didn't live in their household to uh, hold on to, you know, through the duration of this restraining order. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's these, these Second Amendment uh, issues are tough for all of us to deal with, I think. But I think in terms of providing safety to those people who have been you know, assaulted or have uh, gone through violent crimes. You know, I think this is a bill to uh, uh, ensure their safety throughout uh, those difficult types of situations. Yeah, and I think, and I think we're sending a strong message that we su we don't support domestic violence. I mean, uh, the Second Amendment has, has always been tried at the state capitol, it seems like, and at the national level. And and I think uh, uh, folks underestimate the strength of the Second Amendment in this country. It, it, uh, when you start uh, restricting gun, uh, gun use by those that actually are law-abiding, uh, you, you rear the head of a, of a pretty big giant, you know, they really come out. And uh, uh, this particular uh, situation, I think all the safeguards are in there for those that are concerned. Uh, there's no record, record of... Uh, of registration problems here of, of, uh, of guns in this particular bill. Uh, it'll be going to a third party where it started out actually where law enforcement was going to do the storage of guns. And, and warehousing guns for law enforcement is certainly problematic and, and uh, so that, that was taken out of there. But uh, uh, the bottom line is uh, domestic abuse is something that, uh, that we should be paying attention to. Uh, uh, but people need to know that, that, that guns uh, themselves without without operators do not do not really actually harm anybody and and uh, when common sense prevails at the end of the day and the Second Amendment stuff uh, Minnesotans generally uh, in, in the legislature do the right thing and I think uh, this is a this is a bill that I think a person can uh, you know the Second Amendment folks can uh, be can be very happy not have necessarily happy with but uh, they don't have to worry about their gun rights being violated here chief authors of beat cop uh -huh. Well, you're right. I think it's an issue that uh, a lot of people are concerned oh, yes. about. We actually had a couple different. Uh, we also had a viewer from Pelican Rapids who had called in and asked about the restrictions. And I think you've pretty well gone over what is in that bill. 